Hey everyone, welcome back to Her Rules Radio. I'm Alex Jamison, and today's mini power pod is all about inspiring you with some midlife success stories. See, there was this incredible tweet that went super viral I have to share with you. Um, And it really touches into this idea. Did you feel this way? Like when you were growing up, perhaps you had this idea like I did that life is over at 30. Like, you know, if you don't make it by the time you're 30 or 40, then you're a total failure. Um, You know, some of us still have that really young conception and we live in this cult of youth that totally discounts the wisdom and beauty and experience that age brings. And what's the worst thing about this, I think, is that it makes us middle-aged mamas and papas lose total faith in ourselves and we stop following our dreams and we feel ashamed and we quiet our own fierce voices and we squash our creativity 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 <laughs> i'm just i'm just going to make up some words for us so here's an antidote to that false story that once you cross a certain arbitrary age you're past your prime here are some incredible stories inspired by this great tweet that went out a couple weeks ago from Melissa Hunter who herself is a writer and producer She said, at the end of 2020, instead of some 30 under 30 and next gen list, please profile middle-aged people who just got their big breaks. I want to read about a mother of two who published her first novel, a director who released their first studio feature at 47. That's the list we want. And boy, oh boy, did this take off. It's at over 200,000 likes thousands and thousands of comments and stories that people shared on Twitter. And I wanted to share just a couple of the comments that I loved so much. And there were thousands to choose from. I mean, go on over and find this list. Um, I also put it up on my blog, but this one woman, Connie wrote, um, Melissa, former single mom here, middle-aged, if I get to live to be 120, <laughs> I'm 62. Random House will re- release my debut novel, The Daughters of Erie Town, on June 9th. I dedicated it to my seven grandchildren. Oh, I love that so much. That's so cool. So her first novel is coming out at the age of 62. Another woman said, first book deal at 55, 15 books since in the last five years. So she's now 60. And in the last five years, she's published five books. She made the Amazon all-star status. And then she says, I'm on fire now and I'm not holding back. It's never too late. Now, what's so cool about so many of these stories is that you would see women in their 50s or 60s sharing their big breaks, their breakthroughs. And then immediately underneath a comment from a younger woman. So here was this woman responding to one of the stories that inspired her. She said, this inspires me so much. Life doesn't end at 30 and I'm tired of people around my age, 36, saying that they're old. Age is a number. You're only as old as you feel and people of all ages can have firsts and achieve goals. So I posted this whole thing in our Her Rules Radio Crew Facebook group. And I got so many comments and people started sharing your stories. So Karen Cooks wrote, I started um, a master's in nonprofit leadership and management at 55. I'll finish in two years, even though the window is five while I'm running a business. So she's running a business and she's getting her master's. And get what? She's getting straight A's going into year two. Age does not define us, but it does remind us that we have limited time. Use yours how you see fit. Boom. Jamie Baum wrote, published my first book at 56. Check it out. It's called Then She Woke Up, fiction available on Amazon. Allison Pride said, I downloaded my 2,000 square foot house and three car garage to a 36 foot sailboat. Now I'm learning how to take care of the diesel engine and electrical systems. Totally not where I envisioned myself, but loving every minute. I'm 57. Oh, how awesome. Nancy Dentz Street wrote, I turned 60 this year, just went back to running, and I'm CEOing a startup. How fab. 
Sandy Lutz Wiener wrote, I changed my country job at 42, went through IIN health coach program at 50, started ballroom dancing at 58. <laughs> I love these stories. Judy Ferris wrote, I went back to school to become an LPN. I'm not what sure an LPN. I think it's some kind of nurse. So I went back to school to become an LPN when I was 50. I've never worked in healthcare before, but it was a childhood dream. And Joanna wrote, Woot, I just turned 46 and I'm throwing my efforts into growing my health coaching business while maintaining a full time office job. <sighs> Amazing. These stories are so, so, so inspiring. They lift me up because I still suffer from this compare and despair mode. And I know I've published four books. I have a new one coming out this year that I co-wrote with my husband. It's called Radical Alignment. Um, you know, I know I've got tons of time left and still I feel myself going into this spiral that I haven't made it big enough yet that I should have done more. <laughs> That's the thing. It's the should have done more. I'm not good enough yet. And that's, you know, that's really old. That's very old and deep in me. And I know that it resonates with a lot of you too. So here's a couple more success stories from a couple of my own beloved Creatrix clients that I think will inspire you. Heather Hudak just published her first book at age 50 called Nourish, Heal, and Thrive. We did some coaching around that. Michelle Morgan, who is a serial entrepreneur started a nonprofit in Las Vegas. She came to New York City for a retreat with me while we were doing a coaching program. And during our retreat, I had my teacher and friend Nadia Munla come and teach us her Embody dance class. And it really helped her reconnect her with her inner little girl and her love of dance. She went back to her hometown of Las Vegas, found a private teacher, began practicing ballet, and performed a solo recital for her 60th birthday, dancing on point. That's a huge accomplishment for anyone. You know, like dancing ballet in point shoes? I mean, I could not do that for sure. I'm about to turn 45. Michelle did this for her 60th birthday. Hello. Oh, now there's a lot of great stories and um, these kind of later life, midlife success stories. I mean, Martha Stewart, you know, she worked on Wall Street and she didn't come into her own success until after age 41 when she published her first book. Joy Behar, um, you know, former co-host on The View. I don't know if she's a former co-host. I mean, maybe she was, now she's like a panel host. I'm not sure what they call them. Um, she was a high school English teacher who didn't launch her show business career until after 40. Vera Wang, she was, what, an Olympic figure skater or an, at least a pro figure skater. And she decided after she had, um, after she hit 40, that she was going to become this bridal gown designer. Um, the Zagats, you know, Tim and Nina Zagats, who created the Zagat Guide, they cr launched that around the age of 42. So many, so many, so many stories like this. Um, Rodney Dangerfield, he was 46 before he first got his big break. Duncan Hines, don't we all love some frosting? <laughs> um, at age 73, licensed the right to use his name. To the company that developed the cake mixes. You know, he was 55 when he was writing these food and hotel guides. Charles Darwin, he was 50 years old before he published On the Origin of the Species. Samuel Jackson was 46 year old and in recovery from addiction to cocaine and heroin before he starred alongside John Travolta in Pulp Fiction. So many great stories. Julia Child, her first cookbook was published when she was 39, and she made her TV debut at the age of 51. So no matter what your age is, you know, I, I've worked with clients in their late 20s who also feel like um, either they're too young to be taken seriously or because there's so many um, super young influencers, uh, you know, on Instagram and on the social medias that even in their late 20s, they feel past their prime. 
well, listen, it's time to shake off this too old or it's too late vibe. Now I'm getting ready to organize three new retreats this spring 2020 and you are invited. These retreats are going to be so inspiring and clarifying, healing, motivating, and fun. And they're going to be filled with other women who believe that no matter your age, your time is now. So if you're interested in an upcoming retreat, I'm planning a virtual retreat, a one day virtual retreat, and two in-person retreats for small groups of women this spring 2020. So I want you to go to this link and let me know if you're interested in getting the details. They're going to be small groups, the virtual retreat, and the one day New York City retreat will probably cost around $500. And the spring event in Las Vegas that we're planning, that's going to be three days, and it's going to cost a bit more, but we're putting together the details. So I want you to go share your details with me at bit.ly forward slash spring events 2020. That's all one word. bit.ly forward slash spring events 2020. And starting next week, we're going to have some amazing, we've got a string of amazing interviews coming up. Andrea Sirtash from Pregnant-ish, which is all about infertility and navigating fertility treatments, incredible stories there, and so many other amazing guests. So come check out the retreat form to just express your interest that you want some info. Go to bit.ly forward slash spring events 2020. Thanks for listening in. Have a great week. I'll see you back here soon. Mwah.